Usually, when I tell people that I won first place at a national intercollegiate speech tournament, they say, cool, so what's your speech about? And then I tell them the commodification of gay men. It's this idea that it's become trendy in our pop culture to have gay friends. You know, someone to brunch and shop with and tell you that you don't look fat in those jeans. And then they say, oh, so why that speech? I asked myself the same question when I was writing it. Why does this matter? Why should people care about the tokenizing of gay men into politically fashionable tools just to build up their own pseudo-progressive status? And more importantly, how do I show that this happens to all kinds of gay men, a whole swath of gays, a rainbow, if you will? And we don't even know that we're doing it. And so I was thinking about this, and I was being all analytical and meta with it. And this one Thursday afternoon, I was walking across campus with my boyfriend, and we were debating back and forth about what I should put in the speech and what I shouldn't, and this, that, and the other thing. And then this young woman, a senior I sort of knew from something, walks by. She's a really smart student, English lit program, honors, you know, the type. And so I give her a wave, and she sees my boyfriend and me, and she does this. <gasps> You two are so cute. <laughs> now, I know she wasn't talking about how we looked, because like I said, it was a Thursday afternoon. So I had something with coffee stains on it, and I'm sure my boyfriend was wearing flannel. So that's kind of one of the examples that we knew there was a problem. And unfortunately, the problem was not just limited to me or this one experience. I'd like to share with you some headlines written in the past three years of news and feature stories about this hot new trend. So from Teen Vogue, is a GBF gay best friend the new must-have accessory for teen girls? <laughs> Guess what their answer was? And then on the Sundance Channel website, the top 10 reasons girls need gay friends. Oh, best friends. And I'll tell you, before I continue, I did read those 10 reasons, and not one of them are that he might give a TEDx talk later in his life. So <laughs> I think there's some flawed research. And then my personal favorite, leftover woman tap into gay best friends from China. I don't actually know what that means, but <laughs> if there's any woman out there who equate themselves with like yesterday's macaroni salad, I'll meet you after the show. <laughs> so my speech was called an after-dinner speech. And after-dinner speaking uses humor to make its point alongside information. And my speech was broken into three sections, problem, cause, and solution. And it became pretty clear as I was crafting the speech that the problem was widespread and pretty much accepted as normal. This is not just the Will and Grace effect, or Kurt from Glee, Stanford from Sex and the City, Brian from New Normal. The token gay friend from television and movies that we all know has been caught on with mass media and is perpetuated by the likes of Teen Vogue. So that especially within my generation, as young gay men feel more comfortable coming out and becoming who they are, young straight women are being told to snatch them up faster than the hottest new thing from Prada and defining them before they get the chance to define themselves. In other words, my coach and I knew that we had a speech. This leaves the cause and solution segments. Now, I could just tell you what those are, but wouldn't you rather see an award-winning humorous speech on the subject instead? Yeah? All right. So to finish this presentation, I'll just perform the second half of my speech from Pi Kappa Delta Nationals. Sound good? Great. So why am I so cool? <laughs> Duh, tea tree oil and organic goji berries. But to explain this trend of the gay best friend, we have to look at three main causes. First, we are often portrayed as one-dimensional caricatures. According to the Daily Utah Chronicle of September 5th, 2012, gay men on TV are often portrayed as the effeminate male tokenized side who just loves to help you with your hair. TVTropes.org, last access September 24th, 2012, even has a name for these types of characters. Pet homosexuals. 
gay men who exist to add cheap laughs to an otherwise all straight and all boring story. I mean, how funny would the Kardashians really be without Bruce Jenner, right? <laughs> you know, it's true. The second cause is that having gay friends is seen as pseudo-progressive. People want to appear knowledgeable and trendy, even when it comes to the taking up of civil rights of homosexuals without really having to prove themselves. On January 13th, 2013, Fox News reported, liberals, just kidding, they reported, <laughs> They reported that support for gay rights in America has doubled since 1996, as people more openly make gay friends. Basically, it's like saying, well, I'm cool, because I know gay people. I mean, what can a black friend do for you nowadays? He ain't gonna fondle your boobies until you're fabulous. Unless, of course, you had a gay black friend. Oh. Huh, I'm gonna get me one of those. <clears throat> the third cause is hipsters. And according to the Huffington Post of March 13th, 2012, hipsters' tastes are based on fashion rather than expression of their actual feelings. Being cool nowadays means standing up for gay rights. I mean, just walk into an American apparel store. Everyone in there is dying for a gay friend to match their disco pant and velvet polka dot bow tie. Plus, if I can blame anything on the hipsters, I will. <laughs> so, we've gone from the gay man's oppression to the kind of weird obsession. But how do we turn your GBF into no longer a possession? I know that you are stressing with this problem cause direction, but don't worry, because you're about to get a lesson from Mark's solution session. First, don't let TV and the internet be the only place you go to learn about gay culture. That's what Crate and Barrel, H&M, Zara, and Lady Gaga are for. The point is to get a well-rounded education because there are so many different types of gays. Tall gays, short gays, Smart gays, dumb gays, fun gays, yum gays, bum gays, ben gays. Which is the type of gay you rub on your body for instant long-lasting pain relief. Second, don't be so mean to each other. In 2012, Amy Astley, the editor of Teen Vogue, said the reason women in particular seek out gay friends is that none of them want to hang out with each other. Apparently, they'd rather find a homosexual man sponge to suck up all their venomous venting. But I gotta tell you, if one more person tells me about how their coworker, friend of me, nemesis, is something kinda sorta insulting, I'm going to strangle them with my banana hammock. <laughs> now, to avoid stereotypes, Yahoo.com of July 26, 2012 reflects, yes, there are women out there who champion female camaraderie and sisterhood, but there are also those who will not hesitate to spirit their nastiness. That being said, ladies, don't let your lady friends make you feel so bad about yourself. That's why we have Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> Third, and lastly, and probably the easiest, treat people like people. I don't care how Kathy Griffin is treating Anderson Cooper. I'm here to tell you that I am a person. I paid $12 for this haircut, I hate them all, and I still don't know if it's really pronounced Ralph Lauren or Ralph Lauren. If you really need to, you can make flashcards or something. Prada, designer. Person, Mark. Hi, nice to finally meet you. So today, we looked at the problem of the gay best friend trend. Second, we delved into some of the causes that were perpetuating this trend. And finally, we looked into some solutions for killing the trend, which in my opinion is uglier than Ugg boots. Just as Karl Marx, who coined the term commodification, put it best in 1887, a commodity appears, at first sight, a very trivial thing, and is easily understood. Its analysis shows that it is, in reality, a very queer thing. I know. More like the fabulous manifesto. Thank you very much. <laughs>